Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Joy of Sticks. Stickhead here with your Atari ST gaming channel and I've got some additions to the collection to share with you. Um, first up, a bit of an apology to make. I'm not actually able to open this one with you today. Uh, it was delivered about a week ago and my two-year-old son uh, got hold of it and rather excitedly ripped it open. Bless him, but he was so excited I couldn't possibly be cross with him about it. Uh, but here it is, Stunt Car Racer. Uh, really, really chuffed to add this to the collection. I don't know if you saw my video from a week or so ago, but um, it's an absolutely cracking game. One of the best racing games on the Atari ST, and one that I really enjoyed back in the day. Let's have a look inside, shall we? We've got a manual, a very thick manual. Is that all English? It is all English. Blimey. We have a technical supplement. <laughs> and a fetching red on blue floppy disk. There we go. So yeah. This is in quite nice condition actually. Um, it's got a bit of a dun dent on the back there. It wasn't my two year old son who did that, bless him. But uh, as is often the case with these cardboard boxes, you get um, scuffs and things in the corners and there's none of that really. So really pleased with that. That's a really nice um, condition copy. And <laughs> it's nice to get it because I won an auction for Stunt Car Racer on eBay. And the guy obviously felt that it wasn't quite enough money, so I refused to send it out. Um, I had to go through PayPal to get a refund for that. Okay, we're right, we're on to package number two. Now, this one is from a subscriber to the channel known as Loggins1969, I think. Yeah, I think that's right. He's asked me not to give out his real name, so I won't. If I do, you might see a jump cut or a bleep or something. <laughs> But yeah, he's he's um, from Finland, and he had a load of games lying around that he didn't want anymore. So he asked me if I wanted them. So absolutely bold, bold, bold over by the uh, generosity. That's absolutely fantastic. So let's see, let's see what's inside, shall we? Let's cut this open. Right, it's all nicely packaged inside. We've got air pockets and air bubbles galore. So let's have a little look then, let's see what we've got. Okay, first up we have ST Dragon, or is that Saint Dragon? I was never sure, <laughs> never sure of how to say that to be honest. But um, I remember this reviewing very highly back in the day. In fact, it's got some of the reviews on the back here. One of the best shoot ups of the year, possibly the best ever. That was Zero Magazine, 91%. What else have we got? A wonderfully accurate conversion. The graphics and sound are of arcade quality. That's the Amiga version there. <laughs> Probably the sound's not of arcade quality in the SD, but there you go. Contains some of the toughest and most unusual end of level aliens found in any blaster. So yeah, I've never played this, so this is going to be fascinating to play. I've heard of it before because of those reviews, uh, and I'm intrigued by it, so I look forward to playing that. And we've got a manual too. Very nice, with a bubble wrap inside the box to keep it all in tip-top shape, so yeah, thank you very much, Loggins. Alright, what else have we got? Oh, fantastic. This is a, a great uh, addition to the uh, core collection. I'm really happy about this. I've got fantastic memories of this one. This is Battle Chess. <laughs> this is one of the great things about playing computer games over you know, growing up on console games, is that you got a much 
broader spectrum of games and type of games and strategy games in particular is a part of that and you know chess games for example but the reason why I love this is not because it's a really good game of chess it's more due to the uh, animations uh, I don't know how much of that screenshot you can see it's obviously just a photograph of a screen but um, each time a chess piece takes another piece there is an animation uh, and depending on the chess pieces involved each animation is different. I seem to remember if two knights are in combat they, they play out um, a scene very similar to the Monty Python's Black Knight scene where he chops his arms off and his legs and eventually he's just a torso that drops to the ground. But yeah, watching those animations was hilarious. I don't think I was ever particularly good at actually playing chess, but uh, it was good to watch nonetheless. I really dig these uh, Electronics Arts cases. Not only are they plastic and nice and durable, but uh, they've got this like funky hinge at the side here, which is really cool. So let's see, what have we got inside? Some fetching grey discs with the yellow labels, very nice. Uh, a very brief instruction booklet and a warranty card, the all important warranty card and the sleeve. It's got a rather nice picture there of a rather nice painted picture of proceedings there. And a little uh, a little slip about into play. So that's fantastic. What a great addition to the collection. Okay, next one. Uh, next up we have MicroPro Soccer. <laughs> now, I first played this on the Amstrad CPC. Uh, so it's nice to have it on the ST because at one point it was my go-to game for if I wanted to play a football game. Uh, that was obviously before kickoff. Extra time came along. But uh, I remember the remarkable thing about MicroPro Soccer being the fact that you could change the amount of curve you put on the ball in the options menu and you could change it to banana mode, <laughs> which I always thought was brilliant because you could actually put so much curl on the ball that it would just go around in a big circle and come back to you. So <laughs> uh, a couple of discs, and so we got a manual. Very nice indeed. You can see the back there. But you can also choose to play indoor soccer, which is quite unique. I don't remember that being in many other, if any other, football games at all. Maybe Striker on the Super Nintendo. I'm not sure about that. Okay, what have we got next? Ah, oh, fantastic. Look at this. An absolute classic. Populous. I've played this. Uh, on my channel as well. It was one of my top 10 favourite Atari ST games, so do go back and check that video if you want to see me playing this. Um, what can I say about Populous? It's, you know, it's the original God game and they nailed it right from the off. Absolutely fascinating game. Another bright yellow Electronic Arts label. Warranty card. And in manual, which looks like it's a photocopied version. <laughs> I'm sure it isn't, but I'm sure this is how it was meant to be. And inside we've got Quick Start Guide. Yeah, what can I say about Populous? Absolutely incredible. It's one of those games I played as a kid, and then it would get so into my head that uh, you could <laughs> if you could go and find my exercise books, I'm sure my mum's still got them, and then look in the back. Um, around, what year was this released? 90, early 90s is it? or late 80s? If you look at my school exercise books in the back you'll no doubt see little doodles of these huts and knights and villagers <laughs> wandering around because this game was well and truly in my school at that point. Fantastic, what a great addition. Okay, next one, Star Glider 2. 
Now, this is a game that I'm not familiar with at all, but I was really interested in getting hold of it because it's by Argonaut Software, excuse me. <coughs> and um, I actually spoke to somebody who worked, worked at Argonaut, um, and it was really interesting what he was talking about, how um, their pioneering work on 3D engines uh, went into a lot of what you saw in the Super Nintendo uh, Super FX chip and stuff like that and um, apparently Argonaut's influence on on the games industry is huge because of you know they were so good at that 3D stuff so early and I don't know if <laughs> if you remember that transition from when games were mostly 2D to becoming mostly 3D um, but there were a lot of turkeys out then and a lot, a lot of companies didn't really grasp the 3D as well as others uh, and it was companies ahead of the game like Argonaut uh, that really helped transition games into the 3D era whether you think that's a good thing or not I don't know but uh, they were certainly well ahead of the curve so yeah, looking forward to playing this I remember the original Star Glider on the ST because that, I'm pretty sure that was part of the power pack that my uncle got. And um, I, all I remember about that is the theme tune, to be honest, <laughs> because it was a sampled theme tune when there was this uh, harmonised singing of Star Glider. And I just remember thinking, wow, <laughs> this is the next generation. Because you'd never get that on an Amstrad CPC. So what have we got? We've got an Amiga Atari ST key guide, and we have a play guide, and most exciting of all, we've got a novella. Check that out. Star Glider 2 novella by James Follett. I love it. Absolutely love it when books have novellas. One of my favourite things I ever read as a child was the novellas in uh, Frontier Elite 2 which really set the scene and probably really awakened me to science fiction and uh, started me on a massive journey of enjoying lots of science fiction novels so novellas have a special place in my heart I shall look forward to reading that and it, again that's in a, there's a little bash in the corner but apart from that this is in a really nice condition it's always nice to see these big cardboard boxes in good condition okay and another one, here we go, this is Laser Squad. Which is really cool to own. Again, I was talking earlier about the fact that playing computer games over console games, you get a bit more of a variety of um, game types. And this is a turn-based strategy game where you control a squad of, I don't know, are they like space troopers? Something like that. It certainly brings to mind uh, Space Crusade, the old Games Workshop game. Um, yeah, so this, is, this game was programmed by Julian Gollop, um, who programmed... Oh, what's the name of the wizard game? Oh, it's gone. Chaos. Chaos. And, the other, and that was on the Spectrum. I think there might be a version for the ST. Probably is. But then on the ST, there's Lords of Chaos as well, which is turn-based. Except you're only one wizard, you're not controlling a squad in that game. Um, but that's a cracker as well. Never actually played this, but on the quality of those two games, I'm really looking forward to playing this. I can imagine it's very, very good. Actually looks very similar to um, Lords of Chaos. And of course, Julian Gollop would go on to um, massive fame in the future with his XCOM games and stuff like that. Um, right, and last, but by no means least, Ghouls and Ghosts. Absolutely love this game. And there is one reason why I love it more than any other, and that is the music. This has to have, I think, the best music of any Atari ST game. Uh, Tim Follin just works absolute wonders with the YM chip in this game. Um, it really just doesn't sound like any other game. Um, it really kind of runs with that medieval fantasy feel. Um, 
just just incredible from both a, how it actually sounds and the, the compositional sense that he has is just just out of this world. Um, sometime in the future, I'm going to have to try and collate all my favourite um, Atari ST game theme, uh, theme tunes, and then I'll, I'll make a video of that. Um, but this is definitely one that will feature. What, look at that cover! Cap honestly, Capcom games in the in the UK, at least anyway, have got terrible, terrible covers. Look! Look at him. He looks like some kind of cyborg warrior from the future, or how they viewed the future back in the 60s. I mean, any of you that have played the game or are familiar with it, I'm sure it's a lot. Arthur does not look like that. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> uh, it's a two-disker. Very nice. No manual in that one, so I'll have to be on the lookout for a manual at some point. Sometimes they crop up on eBay, manuals only. So I'll have to see if I can get a hold of that. And that's your lot. Uh, should we have a quick run through of what we've got? Stunt Car Racer, that was an eBay purchase. And then the lovely Loggins 1969 has sent me Micropro Soccer Saint Dragon? ST Dragon? One or the other. And Battle Chess, Ghouls and Ghosts, Laser Squad, Star Glider 2, and Populous. Uh, some absolute belters there, and really, really looking forward to playing those. Fantastic additions to the collection. But, last and by no means least, he also. <laughs> because he wasn't very impressed that I was playing the SD games on the emulator with a pad. I actually use a wired Xbox 360 pad to play um, SD games on, the, on my PC through the Steam emulator. And that's so I can capture the footage really high quality because I found that recording off the screen it, it doesn't give the kind of quality that I'm after. So I, although I do play my ST a lot and, and play my games with the real hardware, with a real joystick, when I play um, for the channel to record some footage I'm always on my PC using Steam and yeah as I say an Xbox 360 pad which isn't always the best because the games were designed for joystick, I'm thinking in particular, in particular um, International Karate Plus, you know you, can, you can't get anywhere near the same level of accuracy and speed from a, a D-pad as you can from a joystick. So, feeling sorry for me, he has sent me this little beauty here, which is pretty much an exact replica of the old Competition Pro joysticks. Um, but, at this end, we have a USB cable. Oh, that feels nice. So yeah, so I can play I can play through the emulator but get a bit more of an authentic feel from this gorgeous joystick. And that is a really nice feel to it actually. You know, you kind of worry that in recent years you making joysticks like this is a bit of a lost art and that you know it might not be quite as good, but it's it's very very definite feel to the stick and the great thing about the Competition Pro and my favourite joystick which was the Zip Stick um, is that the travel on the joystick is very small but the click of the micro, micro switch is very definite and I always felt that that gave you the best uh, compromise between responsiveness and speed. Um, I don't know, you tell me what you think, what's your favourite joystick? I mean. I know people that swore by those big, chunking, quick shot pro things and I could never get on with those. I always preferred the these kind of things and the zip sticks. Uh, but yeah, let me know what, what was your favourite joystick and why. <laughs> but that's that's absolutely cracking and that's going to make making videos for the channel much, much more pleasurable. So 
Thank you very much for that, Loggins, and thank you very much for those games. I'm, as I say, bowled over by your uh, generosity. That's absolutely incredible. I'm going to get so much fun out of playing with the, with the joystick and those games. So, um, cheers, mate. Thank you very much. And to the rest of you, thank you very much for watching. Uh, as I say, let me know in the comments what was your favourite joystick. I'd love to hear those. And uh, take care. Bye-bye.